English by the Nature Method, Chapter Ninety Nine, the Ninety Ninth Chapter. New Friends. A few weeks after Storm and Mister Edwards had written to the police to get permission for Storm to stay, Mister Jenkins rang up and told Mister Edwards that he had been able to arrange everything. Storm might stay on for another year. So Marion and Marshall. And a small number of other young people, friends of Marion's and Marshall's, and now Storm's friends too, decided that they had better do something about this, about his education, as they expressed it, and teach him everything he ought to know about the country and its people in order to become a true Englishman. It all started in fun, of course, but they soon became really interested in this education business. Whenever possible, they went in the evenings to hear Englishmen of science speak about different subjects in which they were interested. Natural history, for instance. Afterwards, they would go either to Marshall's or to Marion's home and have long arguments about what they had heard. At first, the tea table would be ready for them when they arrived, but soon the visits grew so frequent that Mrs. Marshall and Mrs. Edwards had to let them boil the water. Make the tea and lay, and lay the table themselves. They all helped gladly, of course. And so on these evenings, the house was filled with young voices in hot argument from kitchen to dining room. On such nights, they would draw the curtains, put out the electric light in the middle of the room, and sit in a semicircle in front of the fire, talking about different subjects. With only the circle of yellow light shed by a small lamp over the fireplace, they would sometimes be lost in thought, dreaming wonderful dreams about the future. Mister Edwards was very pleased with all this. Like most fathers, he had tried with many wise arguments to show his daughter that knowledge is the rock upon which young people should build their future. And Marion had, like most healthy girls, said yes, father, and then afterwards forgotten all about it. She had dreamt again her own rosy dreams, in which she would always, through some happy chance, be on top of the world like an eagle on a rock. They said the eagle. She would see herself in the theatre, perhaps standing in front of the curtain with her arms full of flowers, smiling across the hundreds of electric lights at her feet to a house full of shouting and admiring people. Or she would paint beautiful pictures, and crowds would come to admire her art. She's learning quite a different art now," her wise mother thought to herself, when she saw the interest with which Marion took part in the discussions, the art of living in a world full of plain facts and liking it. Mrs. Edwards even had to stop the girl now and then; she had begun to hurry through her meals in order to get on with some interesting study or other, as if she thought eating a waste of time. "Be careful, child! You're healthy enough now, but if you keep up that speed, you'll make yourself ill." At her work, my dear," her husband said. "It won't last very long. As soon as she has to start arranging everything regarding the home, her interests will be divided more equally between study and other kinds of work. The chief thing is that she is learning to use her brain now and not just dreaming away her time. I do hope you're right," Mrs. Edwards said. "I'm, my dear. You may be sure of that," her husband answered. Her chief reason for this sudden interest in science is. In plain words, that she doesn't want her future husband to think her too foolish. On a fine day at the beginning of October, a party consisting of the usual small group of friends had gone into the country for the weekend. They had decided to stay the night at a village about twenty miles from London, and from there to go for walks in the woods and the surrounding country. As soon as they had had their tea on Saturday, they started out for their first walk from the village. Although the sun was already low in the western sky, let's sit on the grass a bit and watch the sun setting. Marion suggested when they reached a small hill. Oh, it's wonderful! She cried. I wish I could paint it all: the wood, the small groups of trees, in the fields, the village, the village. There, there! Don't be sorry, Marion. I'll buy you a nice picture postcard when we get back. You are impossible! Marion laughed. Well, there is nothing left of the sun now. Shall we go on? Do you notice that there are hardly any birds left now? Storm asked as they rose to go. At least you don't hear any birds singing, 
That's because it's autumn, Marion replied. There are still many birds that haven't left the country yet, but they don't sing in the autumn. Marshall? Marshall, she suddenly cried. Where are you taking us? Into this field, he answered and began to open a big gate. What's the matter? Are you afraid of the cows? They do have such very big horns, she replied. Yes, couldn't we go another way? asked Ellen, Marion's, Marion's friend. I don't like the look of those horns either. Those are the horns. But this is the more direct way, he said. We don't like going that way, do we, Ellen? Marion answered. I'm sure those cows are going to start running towards us the moment we are inside the gate. All right, I give up then, Marshall said. Half an hour later, they were back in the village. It was still too pleasant out of doors to go inside. So they decided to walk about the village and look at the houses, some of which were very old. It's strange to think, Storm said to the others, pointing out an old house with a beautiful old door. How much money and work was spent in the old days to make the houses beautiful? Look at this door, for example. And yet they did nothing at all to make the houses healthy to live in. They didn't even have drains to take the dirty water away from the houses, but just threw it out of the windows into the streets or the gardens. That's the drain. And so, of course, said Hardy, Ellen's brother, Many people died every year of all the diseases that are the consequences of dirty people living in dirty houses. In the East, those special diseases are still very common. But even in many countries in Europe, you are almost sure to get typhoid fever if you drink water that hasn't been boiled first. What a lot of trouble, Marion said. You would think that it would be much less trouble to clean up those places and have drains from all the houses, or whatever it is that needs to be done. You say this almost as if you would like to do it yourself, Storm said with a smile at her serious face. I would, she answered, only I should be afraid to go to the east and perhaps get one of those diseases myself. My father has a friend who got malaria when he was in India, and he still gets very ill at times, when the fever is burning his brains out, as he says. But let's talk about something a little more pleasant, she continued. Shall we go in and have our supper now? Yes, let's go in, Ellen said. I would like to put on another pair of shoes. I was foolish enough to go walking in new shoes, and of course they are still too tight to be comfortable. The consequences is that my feet hurt. Isn't that just like girls? Why don't you buy shoes that are big enough? Her brother asked. If you can't spread your toes a bit in new shoes, you may be sure that they are too tight to be comfortable. There he goes again. Ellen laughed. Really, you should have been a doctor, I think. Always talking about diseases and what's good for you and what isn't. You'll be pleased to hear, she said to the other young men, that he has found out that beer is good for the stomach. That's right, Hardy explained in a serious voice. You see, when I was younger, I didn't drink beer. Father wouldn't let him, Ellen interrupted, smiling. He thought it was a waste of money. I had a lot of trouble with my digestion, Jen. He went on. No doubt, because you were always filling yourself with sweets, she interrupted again. But now that I have begun to drink beer, he continued, paying no attention to her, there is nothing the matter with me any more. Perhaps not with your digestion, Ellen said, but I believe that I have seen you when your beer was giving you a bit of trouble. Tight or drunk, I would have called you. What is my crime? The poor fellow cried at last. That I should be punished by having such a sister. Peace, children, laughed Storm. Let's all have a glass of beer and see if that won't make her a little gentler with you. He called the waitress and ordered their beer. We haven't fixed anything about, your, about our rooms yet. How much do you charge for rooms here? He asked her when she brought the beer. Single rooms, nine shillings. Double rooms, fifteen shillings, she replied. We'd better take single rooms, he said. They sat for some time talking and watching the other guests in the room, but as they were all rather tired, they soon went up to bed. Next morning they were up early, so that they might have a long day for their walk. I heard you had trouble with your feet last night, the waitress said to Ellen, when she was bringing the breakfast. Are they better today? As a matter of fact, they aren't, Ellen replied. They hurt me even if I touch them with my fingers. 
I thought that might be the case, so I brought a small bottle of some oil that I always use. Waitresses often have trouble with their feet, you know. Just rub a little oil into the skin of your feet and they will and they will feel much better. Thanks. That's very kind of you, I'm sure. It's no fun walking when your feet give you pain. In the afternoon, when they were returning from their long walk, they met a group of about twenty people, all carrying bags of baskets full of different plants that they had picked in the fields or the woods. I wonder who they are, Storm said to Marion. They all seem to be workers, except that, oh, that tall man over there, but at the same time they look like a class of school children who are out studying natural history with their teacher. Perhaps they are both, Marion replied. You see, several of our universities send out travelling teachers all over the country. If a sufficiently large number of people in the town wish to take up one or more subjects of study and are willing to work seriously, one of the universities arranged to send a teacher to them. They are charged nothing for this, as the teacher is paid by the university. Many people for whom it would be impossible to study at the university have been able to take up some study in this way and have gained really useful knowledge of their subject. What a fine idea, Storm said. It gives work to men of science as teachers, and it gives some idea of science to people who have to work, but want to get more education. Really, I'm rather proud of us English. Listen to those four men playing cards at the next table. I'm afraid you won't feel so proud of us English when you hear their stories, Hardy said. When they were having supper that evening, one of them seems to be the village policeman. They have been talking of nothing but fights and blood and crime since they came. Things that have taken place in this little village. Their cards too are just as dirty as their stories. I shouldn't like to touch them. Look at Mary. She has been listening too. She's quite pale. How are you feeling? Anything wrong? Storm asked her. I do feel a little sick, she replied. It must be because I'm tired. But it was made worse by having to listen to that man telling all those stories. If there is time before our train leaves, I think I'll go and lie down a bit. She left the table rather suddenly and ran upstairs. The waitress had seen what had happened. However, and a moment later, she was standing at the fat policeman's table. You're a fine one, you are. So, what you have done now? You have made that poor young lady sick with all your stories. And when the truth is told, you are no more used to us than that dusty old eagle up there on the wall. I'm sure you've never been within five miles of real crime. Marion couldn't help laughing when they told her about it. In fact, she, f she felt better after hearing that the poor policeman had left the place with the waitress pouring truth into his burning ears. I'm still proud of us English, Storm said, when they were sitting in the train. That was a brave little woman. It's a serious matter to speak like that to the law. She's quite safe, old man, Marshall told him laughing. She's his wife. Hmm.